Hey, comic fans, Higgy Pop in the comic room. All right, let's get started. I got a limited on time today, but I wanted to touch base with the public. Had a long day at work today. The man was working me today. He's like, get on with it. Get on. I'm like, shaking it, boss. But, uh, all right, I got a little time before I jump in the shower. I want to talk about, I like to talk about things. I've seen how I'm starting my own show. I want to talk about stuff I want to talk about. A little sword and sorcery. And, you know, DC has its own characters that did a little sword and sorcery themselves. You know, it doesn't have to be Marvel and Conan all the time. All right, DC had a great little team up of, 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 Fafford and the Gray Mouser, all right? Not the gay mouse, or the gray mouser. And uh, Fafford is a, a big, tall, red-headed Viking. And the gray mouser is a little sh smaller dude with a sword. And he's, they're, anyways, they're both thieves, all right? And they're uh, warriors, and they get in a lot of problems. And uh, DC had a little series about them. And uh, let's look at this. Because... I, I read these a long time ago. When I found out about them, I says I gotta get the whole run. There's five, I think five or six issues of this in the series. And the art blew my mind. And I'm not sure, I gotta do some research, but this red-headed, tall, Viking-looking dude, Fafford, he, uh, I believe, if it's the same one that teams up with Conan every once in a while and ended up losing a hand, I'm not sure. He looks just like him, and he, and he had a, a, a name very similar. But uh, this is issue number one, Sword of Sorcery. Tales of Fantastic Adventure. All right, this is issue number one. There's our two heroes. All right, that's the gray mouser right there. That's Fafford. And... Uh, Let's see. Fafford the Barbarian and the Grey Mouser. Know ye beyond the portals of the Castle of Shadows waits death himself. All right. And uh, adapted from Tritz Lieber's story, The Price of Pain Ease. This is by Denny O'Neill, the writer, and Howard Chaikin is on pencils. And The Crusty Bunkers on inks. These are all classic, guys. These are all... I mean, look at this. This is art. I mean... You can't get any better, dude. Look at this. And the sto these stories were great. I mean, a lot of thought went into these, and they, from beginning to end, they wrap up, and these guys get into some major jams, but they get out. I mean, they're, they're always pushing the envelope. They're always like, uh, let's steal some more money, or let's steal some more gold, even though they, they just barely escaped. They're like, let's go back and get some more. And they just keep pushing it, man. They always escape, though. The Grey Mouser, he's pretty smart. And Fafford, he's the strong guy. He just starts... They always get drunk and start kicking ass. It's great. And, um... Yeah, this is great stuff. Great stuff. And there is. There's a lot of sorcery, a lot of, a lot of stuff going on in these uh, adventures. So that's issue number one. And, uh, like I said, it's, uh... Denny O'Neill. And I believe he writes them all. Here we go. Let's, let's run through the series. Issue number two, great cover. All right, Sword of Sorcery, issue number two. All right. I would love, I, I should read these again. These are great. All right, issue number three, great yellow look cover. Let me get this out of the plastic because it doesn't do it justice. I gotta show the people. How great this is. Yeah, I hope you guys uh, check these out. You got to find them in the... Uh, got to go thumb through the bins. You know, you may run across them. I mean, look at this chick with wings. She got big old crazy hairy legs. You know, you see these women around. And uh, I, I suggest you turn around and walk the other way. Because you don't want her... Like, uh, you, you know, all of a sudden she's in the shower. She grabs your razor and starts shaving her legs. And you go to shave with it, and all of a sudden your nose hits the shower floor. You're like, oh, what happened? So this is great. This is great. This is issue number three. 
Are there some battles not even the greatest heroes can win? Question mark. All right. Fafford the Barbarian and the Grey Mouse are betrayal. Ah, oh, yeah. See, now they're pirating. See, see, dude, they do it all, oh, man. I'm telling you. You got to read these. Got to. Got to, man. Hey, how come no one's taking credit for the art and stuff on this? There's no uh, swords and scrolls. Yes. I mean, look at the art on this stuff. This is all beauteous. Beauteous issue number three. Yes. Yes. I mean, look, look at the fact that he's just, when he hits you, you know about it. I mean, he'll hit you so hard, you, you, uh, you got to unzip your fly to blow your nose. This is, I wish I had glasses on me, August of 70, 73. All right, now let's go to issue number four. Issue number four, a giant eyeball. Fafnir and the Mouser battle, the cloud of hate. I remember that story. Very good. This is the final one of the run. Yes. Five. Issue number five. This is a good one. Another yellow cover. Oh, great cover, man. I remember this one. They were in this boat. They were in this boat. And they had they just stole a bunch of stuff. So they're in this boat trying to run away from a town or something. And that that the octopus uh, grabs them. Okay, now the danger begins as Fafnir and the Grey Mouser risk all to find the sunken land. And they end up with like a hidden island with this, these people that are high, hidden away from all civilizations. And they're like, uh, they don't know what to make of these two guys. Now, here's a little special, something special. Here's a little crossover action. Wonder Woman, Diana Prince, meets the Grey Mouser and Fafford. That's Wonder Woman when, when she was in her white jumpsuit 70s era. You know, she was all, you know, she was like, I got to be different. Let me take it out of the cover. Let me take it out of the plastic. So they wanted to get a little juice with this, and they brought Wonder Woman in. Either they wanted to get juice for Wonder Woman or the, these two guys. Either way. There's, look, look, look at Fafford. He's like, I'm going to hit her over the head. What do you think? And uh, the Grey Mouse was like, oh, boy. She's so close. And uh, Wonder Woman's like, Karate Chap! Dangers never cease as Diana battles friend and foe alike in a land beyond time. Introducing Fafford, the Barbarian, and the Grey Mouser. You'll never forget Fangs of Fire. No, I won't. I won't forget. Art is fantastic. Story by Samuel Delaney. Art by Dick Giordano. Editing by Denny O'Neill. Opening page, there's Wonder Woman, and there's a Fafford finding her, and he's like, jackpot. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, she kicks him right in the lips. wubba bush She's like, uh, don't touch me there. Uh-oh, he's, he's got him in a, she's got him in a chicken wing. Yep, there's a lot of shenanigans going on. I don't remember reading this, I mean... It may have been a little even too ridiculous for me. I mean, but it looks good. It looks good. It looks good, man. The Gray Mouser. He's a shysty one. Oh, man. This is good stuff. Good stuff. All good stuff. All right. So these are the little gems you can find out there from the 73 era. Let me see when this one was. This one was in 72. All right. So this was probably before this uh, five-issue run came out. And for some really good reading, Epic Comics came out with uh, four little trades of uh, Fafford the Grey Mouser, all right? And this is, <laughs> you know, Hellboy fame. Here we go. This is by uh, Chaikin, Mignola, Williamson, and Van Vecklenball. But... Magnolia is this is you could you can tell by the yarn. Okay, this is book number one. All right, 
Can you see that? And do yourself a favor and find these. The stories are, they'll blow your mind. I, I couldn't get over how good these stories were. I was like, man. And I think they're taken from, uh, someone wrote these. And they had they adapted them into these uh, graphic novels. Il Met and Lankmar. Fritz Lieber's Fafford and the Grey Mouser. You see, you get a little maps. And this art is great. You know, Magnolia style, heavy on the inks. And uh, these guys, they're a riot. And these, these books are funny, too. The hijinks these dudes get up to, and uh, and they're all, and they're always in trouble. They got girlfriends and they're in big trouble all the time. Big trouble. They're like, uh, who me? Nah, this girl ain't with me. I'm sorry. And book number two. All right. And I, just by looking at these covers, I remember these stories because they were so rememberable. You know. All right. These are all Fritz Lieber's, Fafner and, and the Gray Mouser. Here's book three. Oh, this is when they they get pitted against themselves. They fight each other. So good. So good. Oh, yeah. Dude, I know all about these books because the stories are so dang good. Check it out. Book four. This is the last one. It took me a while to chase down all four of these. I'd find them in all random parts of the world, and uh, and I finally found all four. And when I completed it, I was so happy. I was so happy. And uh, I think that's all I wanted to show. But you know, these are different things that you will never see anywhere else but Higgy Pop Comics. You know, you can go anywhere to see a good old Batman comic. I mean, come on, come on. You want to see a Batman? This here's a Batman I got today. Here, hang tight. Hang tight. Here we go. Here we go. All right. There you go. Here you get your jollies. This is Detective Comics, issue number 301. Classic. All right. I picked this up today at my local comic shop, Second Alarm Comics in North Brantford, East Haven Line in Connecticut. All right. Great price. This one... Uh, was kind of ch on the cheap because there was a problem with the top staple. And uh, <laughs> look at these guys. These guys in the beehive uh, costume. He's like, if you step out of the capsule, Batman, you'll not only menace everybody around you, but you'll doom yourself. <laughs> and then Robin's like, Th -th this looks like the end of Batman's career. <laughs> the condemned Batman. Batman's in big trouble, dude. Big trouble. Big trouble. And uh, I didn't read that yet. But my local pickup for the month is Tom King's Danger Street. And I am going to have a great video on all of this, this run. I'm not, I'm not sure how long this is going to go, this run. But this is issue number five. And it's fantastic. This is based on first issue uh, series from DC Comics. It's called First Issues or something. And that came out in the 70s. And it was, you know, it died before it began. But there was like uh, 13 issues that came out. And it all featured one uh, character from the DC Universe. Very B-list types. Even some that were invented. And they, Tom King finds a way to put them all in one storyline. All 13 characters in one story. And he's wrapping it all up right here. And it's such a good job. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all the original uh, DC first issues, put them up so you can see who they are, who the characters are, and I'm going to go through the storyline. And you're going to be riveted. Thanks for watching. And I can't wait to read this because when I read comics, it makes me smart.